So before you get mad, type it in the comments just because you read the title. Avery, you're just a meta hater. You don't know what you're talking about. First of all, you may want to go touch some grass if that's how you're going to react. Second of all, hear your boy out. I've been playing this game for over 10 years. Let me just explain myself because I do think Purely is still going to be a good deck. It's just not going to be a tier one deck. So let's dive on into, well, our first video as a full-time YugiTuber after quitting a toxic job that tried to gaslight me and manipulate me. So let's dive on into it, shall we? It feels good to be full-time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that full-time YouTuber subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even further beyond the 1100 ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support. Had to kind of blast through that because I got a lot that I want to talk about in this video. So let's just dive on into it. So purely I have been playtesting like crazy. For those of you who haven't been keeping up with the channel and all the uploads, uh, basically the next meta deck or the next deck just in general I plan on playing is purely. We're going from Cash Tira to purely. And I have been playtesting purely like crazy especially for like the past week and a half, I'm not even going to the May 6th Kissimmee Regional that's happening. One, because I'm just over this format. And number two, because I just don't have a good purely build, I feel right now. You know, not any of the big YouTubers have been posting deck profiles of it. So I don't have like good, like knowledgeable players to go off of. Not that like smaller YouTubers aren't posting good profiles. It's just that I wanna see what the bigger names in the community are thinking of and labbing with this deck to figure out how best to play it. And from what I've experienced playing purely as a pure deck, no pun intended, it's just not that good, man. Like there are so many outs to X purely noir, which is basically a crooked cook or like an ultimate Falcon or a Cleefort Towers, however did you want to look at it. But there's so many ways to stop it. Like you have Kaijus, you have Santa Claus. If you end on X Purely Noir with like a Lyra Lusic Ensemble Robin or a Princess Sylvan Sprite, then they can Lava Golem you. Like there are so many different ways that you can go about eliminating the Noir just in monsters. That's not even including like, you know, using Xyz Encore or Herald of the Abyss and just ruining their day. Like, yeah, if you've got straight Purely Street and uh, my friend purely then you're in technically insulated from nibiru because you can just rebuild your board but like okay you get three quick play spells from your grave to your hand and you can establish like another purely to excavate the top three like okay that's cute but like most decks are probably just going to otk you anyway and i don't know if i'm just playing this deck wrong or if it's just too confusing for me to understand because that has happened in my over 10 years of playing this game competitively and that's why i said to watch this video to the end because there have been decks that I have loved, loved, ladies and gentlemen, I would have made my girlfriend if I could, <laughs> where I love the deck, I try to pick up and play said deck, and I suck donkey balls with the deck. <laughs> and this could be an example of that. Let, let me give you a quick backstory behind what I'm talking about. When I first started playing competitively in around 2008, 2009, it was two weeks after the, the Fusion deck name got changed to the Extra deck. This was during the time of 2008 when Synchros had just came out, Teledad was a thing, Gladiator Beasts were a thing, and I fell in love with Gladiator Beasts. I thought Gladiator Beasts were so damn cool, and for years I wanted to build and play Gladiator Beasts, and of course me being my childish ass, like 12 years old, I didn't have a job, like I didn't have a way to afford these cards, I didn't have good trades, my trades sucked. And so finally, like several years later, I was able to finally build Gladiator Beasts, and it was still a rogue deck at the time that I ended up building it and playing it, and I took it to a regional. It was like a seven round regional. Your boy went two and five. Like it was awful. And it wasn't even again because of the fact that like the deck was just dog water or it was in the booty booty butt cheek of the tier list category at the time. It was a good rogue deck at the time. I just sucked with the deck. And this is why you hear a lot of players, myself included, always telling you to play the deck that you are most comfortable with. Because you could, you know, play, let's say Gladiator Beast is just the best deck in the room at the time, just for argument's sake. You could pick up Gladiator Beast, you could learn the combos, you can play it, whatever, and it just may not suit your play style. And even though you're playing the best deck in the room, you're going to go get your butthole destroyed, and you're going to be walking out of the venue wanting to punch a wall, being like, I don't know what happened. I just spent all this money on the best fucking deck in the room, and my butthole is bleeding. Like, wh what happened? And it comes down to the skill level of the player. It comes down to your uh, play style as a 
player and going from there. And for me with Gladiator Beast, that was never the case for me. To this day, to this day, I could copy a Gladiator Beast build that like, let's say it top eights a regional just out of nowhere because it's topped a few things uh, several years in the past uh, with like the new Link monster and shit like that. And I'll do terrible with it. it it's just garbage. Like, I, okay, someone topped with a regional or an OTS championship. Good for you, Sugar Boo Bear. I'm going to go touch grass because I suck with the deck. Like, when I posted that Infernity deck profile, everybody's like, yo, can you post duels? Can you post replays? I'm like, bro, I don't know what the fuck Infernity does in 2023. Like, I did a few test hands, but, like, I was misplaying left and right. And, like, I'm not going to sit here and try and learn a deck that I know just as a player, because I've played this game for so long, I'm just not going to do well with it. Like, it's not because, like, you or me or whoever is necessarily a bad player. It's just the fact of our play style does not coincide with how that deck is meant to function. You know, my dad, for example, he doesn't play combo decks. He'll play, you know, Burn or Stun with Time Tearing Morganite and Summon Out of Dinah and Inspector Border and Pass. Like, that's his skill level. That's his play style, and that's fine. And so, coming back to purely... It, this could be that similar type of thing where I'm making the correct plays, but I'm just, I'm not understanding the deck on a more fundamental level. And, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm doing all the right things. Like I'm doing my best to end on a noir or, you know, if I'm going second, make the X purely happiness attack multiple times per game. Like I know those things. So I don't know if it's my execution or just I'm getting bad luck or if it's bad deck building or what the fuck ever. And I will say this too. Even if you play your hand entirely correctly, if you don't get a Noir or like a purely leap to have a Noir on standby, you are screwed. Like straight up, If I, I cannot tell you how many times I've ended with an Ep purely plump on my field, just chilling with his fat ass in defense with like 3,600 defense. And I'm sitting there sweating bullets because I'm like, bro, this plump in defense can't do shit, especially if you don't have like a bunch of purely quick plays set in the back row that you can just activate whenever you feel like in order to trigger plump's effect to banish an opponent's monster until the end of the turn. Like that is good in concept, but if you can't pull that off, which I have yet to pull that off because I pretty much just blow through all my quick plays trying to get up to five materials. Or even if I know I can't get to five materials, I'll set them. But then guess what happens? <laughs> we get Kaiju, Sugar Boo Bear, we. So it's like you're, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. And the thing is, is that even ending on a Noir, if the opponent has a way to out the Noir, like it doesn't matter if you have Street and My Friend Purely. You could have 10 of them things. Okay, you're going to get three spells from Grave to Hand. Cool. It's not, the, the, the Street Field spell is not a Runic Fountain, so you can't just play those quick plays from your hand. And like, okay, you go summon Lily to get a search, assuming that they didn't like fucking draw you. Okay, cool. You're going to get a search that you can't use that turn. Okay, the, the regular Purely is going to excavate you one of three that you'll also get to your hand. Okay, cool. You can't use those cards until your turn actually begins. So I don't know if I'm just getting bad luck or if the deck just is really overhyped. Now, this is obviously talking about all the things that are post-Cyberstorm access. I'm not including Duelist Nexus in this because we're not getting that for like two more months. So that could fundamentally change just how the entire deck functions. And this is also barring a ban list too. You know, maybe Konami drops a bombshell of a ban list later on in May or the beginning of June, whatever, that just completely nukes the format to where purely is a tier one deck, to where you can end on an X purely noir, either summoning it or using purely leap to cheat it out. And that's more than enough. And I'm not saying that like the deck is just, okay, it's automatically garbage, don't play it. What I am saying is that having a X purely noir in defense with even like 5,600 defense, that is good. Or even like 4,900 defense, depending on like how many delicious memories you have in the material semantics at this point. That is good. Just what I'm saying is it wouldn't surprise me if like this deck was considered to be tier two because of the fact that there are just so many damn outs to just Noir, not even counting how the deck as a whole functions, that it ends up kind of falling off the radar because of that. Now, you may be thinking, well, Avery, it's tier one over the in the OCG. Like, you know, some, some people try to argue like OCG doesn't dictate TCG, which stop that. Like, you haven't been playing the game for a long time, I guess, Sugar Boo Bear, because uh, the OCG is always a great way to look at what's coming down the pipeline for the TCG. Yes, they have things like Max C, but the fundamental decks in general 
majority of the time, I would argue like 99% of the time, transfer over to the TCG. Unless it's something like random, like a fucking FTK that relies on like, I don't know, like a, a card that's at one here in the TCG and it's three over there in the OCG. Besides things like that. The OCG does have max C, however, and I don't know if max C is the be all end all as to why purely is that good. Because purely, I feel in general, kind of operates like Sky Striker, where you play all these quick play spells and you're able to, in this case, establish basically like a Crooked Cook or a Cleefort Tower. And then you have all these hand traps to basically stun the opponent out of the game. And it is very much a control deck. Like, I'm not expecting purely, depending on your build, like, there's a lot of different ways to play it. I'm not expecting to end on like five negates and an indestructible noir. I'm not expecting that. I always shoot for a straight purely street, my friend purely, and a noir. If you get that, at least even if they kaiju, you can sort of rebuild. Kind of, unless they just OTK you and then you shit your pants and you're just like, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! And so, I just don't know what the cause of it is. And, purely is kind of difficult in that sense because there are so many different engines you can run in it. You can run a Volcanic Shell engine, which I wouldn't recommend because then you're just basically telling your opponent you're going to lose in time. You can run a Dark World engine. You can run a Shadal engine. You can run the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation package. You can play Prod of Pro Pot of Prosperity in it, if I could talk today, to thin through your deck even more, which now I just played a match trying to use Prosperity. My damage was cut in half and I was trying to owe to gay. I don't think I want to go for that, but there are just so many different ways that you can play it. So I want to end this by saying maybe the pure version of Purely is not what we should be focusing on and instead focusing on, you know, Maybe a Naturia engine or a Runic engine or a what the fuck ever engine. Like, I think that mixing it in with something else and then having that Noir as an option is disgusting. I think that's where we're going to see the deck shine. But I could be wrong. Maybe this deck is overhyped. Maybe I spent over $300 on fucking three Purely's, three My Friend Purely's, and three Pretty Memories for nothing. Yeah, your boy spent $342 on nine cards. Fuck me running. Guys... Please, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there something that I miss? Is there something I'm just not thinking of at this point with all my playtesting? This deck is tough. Don't get me wrong. Like, I've been playing this game for years. This deck is really tough to learn. But once you do get a grasp of it, it's very satisfying. And when you are tapping somebody's ass with a fat-ass Noir with, like, over 4,000 attack, mm-hmm, you, you're going to be making a new memory, and it's called getting your invite. It's going to be called purely getting my damn invite. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.